Everything's good, man. I miss you. Thanks for coming out here, man. What a great trip. Yeah, it was. It was, uh, man, crazy, right? Mm. Katrina says she's pretty tired right now. She's been uh, working all day, but I think we can continue. <clears throat> great. Um, yeah. Still haven't heard back from my connections in the Missouri building community. Um, but I, I laid out for Jake Bruton and Peter Yost. Um, Jake Bruton owns Arrow Builders in Columbia, Missouri. And he's the host yeah. of the Unbuild It podcast and a part of the Build Show. Peter Yost is a building scientist who was one of my professors. Um, and they take a long time to respond. So, so I, I started that. Um, I also built this I'm gonna look at my screen. Let's try this. Um, this is like a, a a draft at what I think a teaser would look like. Oh. And oh, one wow. of the things I want to get today is um what information you're comfortable releasing sooner rather than later. Um, but so like, for example, spring to like spring 2022, if that makes sense. Two weeks versus one week. Do you want to advertise the planned wage? Are we confident it'll be in Kansas city? That um, but before we get to that, I don't know. Do you want to just do an update and see, see what, you know, I'm kind of curious what, how we left it and, and what you've been up to. What I've been up to is finishing off the summer X. So we're, we're winding down. So actually people are leaving this Friday and Monday. So it's, uh, I'm free at last after all yeah. this time. Wow. Yeah. Lots of learnings. We're actually doing, um, I think a little grand finale. We're going to do, uh, our micro tractor running on uh, remote control or basically like autonomously, it's going to go back and forth and spin circles through a microcontroller. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the last thing we're doing. Um, so that's pretty cool. Guys are excited. I mean, we've got four people here and then Ken's here for the remainder and he's probably going to be working on, he's going to help out someone on CD go home. So right now the, the siding arrives, so we're going to be ready to pick that up anytime, picking it up Friday. And um, haven't really had my my chance to kind of relax and unwind. Like I've been sleeping in and and being fatigued, like being um, not like high energy, but just resting. So okay. at the same time, that I'm actually so yesterday, for example, I was out there grading on a CD go home, which was pretty cool. So uh, micro track in action, that was pretty cool. Um, I'm actually going to get out there possibly tonight because uh, I just want to get this thing done with bury bury the insulation for the shallow insulated footer, uh, then do the do the siding. Um, I've got the three day teachers education thing on 3D printing, um, basically the professional development first, second, and third next week. Beyond that, I'm all all house. Yeah, talk to Brian. Uh, Br Brian, the latest news is he might have the funding for a mortgage. We have to pretty much develop thing that's um, on our plate, like with Brian or any client, what's the specific distinction between when we find a client and we risk share versus we just do a spec build and take on all the risk or actually do a, another option, which is a person gets uh, gets land and they get a, mortgage or, or loan upon a construction loan upon that land. So it's three different scenarios for Brian. It might be like some kind of a risk share or just, we might put it out in an open market. We don't know yet. We haven't really thought about it. Um, I didn't have time to really do that. Um, latest also is I'm like education facility development and facility development. So the, so the 3000 square foot workshop is becoming a re reality in my mind. Yeah. Basically as soon as we can, 
uh, get the 60 by 40, basically the 20 foot rebar trusses. That's what we want to go with and really max it out. We're, we're still trying to nail the, the way how, if you want to put up a, a structure, because I mean, we constantly need more space for everything. Like for example, if you wanted to start producing printers, like I, I think about it as 16 by 16 or 20 by 20 modules of space. And uh, the trusses, the rebar trusses would do that. So figuring out, okay, can you use the, do the four columns? And then the, the actual vertical, the, the horizontals, you can walk them up the column. So even like a one, even a single person could build a structure. Ah, uh, yeah. And it's like this pretty heavy, I mean, you can basically <laughs> afterwards, after you build that, you can reinforce it to get overhead cranes and things like that. Cause you can keep welding, like it's completely scalable. I can, that's a lesson, another lesson right there. But uh, today morning I was actually had some energy to start thinking about, okay, what is this ultimate facility? Once again, like base by topic. And then you've got like all the critical equipment there. It's well organized. It's got a video camera station. It's got your curriculum station and it's tight. Cause I mean, one of the things uh, learning learnings from this year is like, man, this is uh, teaching. Well, takes time. Like, we got to do like so much, we got to 10X our ability to teach. And uh, interestingly, this last week, uh, just after you left, showed this very interesting thing like, oh yes, yeah, so actually I was kind of inspired to teach better too, uh, part by your discussion, part by suffering, part by other, <laughs> other, but basically the guy said I was like the best, the day after was like the best, best uh, lesson of the, of the entire program. That was kind of cool. Um, but what I, I did like, yeah, I remember what you said about this kind of very simple way to think and explain things like, oh yeah, this is easy and, and trick people into doing it well. Like that's the thing that, that works. It's like tricking people. Like, um, you do a hard problem, but you set it up that it looks easy. Right. That way that really works, man. So people were like, holy cow. They were like, wow. And, and, um, from, it's kind of hard for me to adjust to that because I know that we're not doing like we're doing less than what we can do, but just that balance of what's enough that it looks super impressive and people have accomplished. But it's like it's definitely not not uh, I have to get out of my head, get out of my head to think about what the people would find completely crazy. Because for me, it was like, oh, man, that was so easy. Right. Yet they got so excited about it, you know. Uh, so. The idea is that the things that I see as valuable, like, okay, real like development points, they're not important development points to the, to students, you know, like they don't see that, oh, that's actually would be super valuable if we did this all the way, but that's not how it works when you're teaching. So, so with that too, thinking like, yeah, like a real, like when we do the campus and replicate the facilities worldwide, man, think about best, best in class education that you really get that that promise of the rapid learning on, okay, here's all of like all of technology, like in a nutshell, like that, that way. Um, mm -hmm. The closest to that, I think is like Fab Academy, like Fab Academy is taught by people who are uh, pretty diverse in what they teach. Like they're all over the place too, like electronics, mechanics, coding, microcontrollers, like all this stuff, they're all over the place too. We have more of the real direct industrial applications and all of that, but uh, yeah, kind of trying to piece together what the what a really good pro program would look like. So that's that's kind of a like I actually started writing writing down some of these things like pedagogy. Like I'm, it's pedagogy. You got a bunch of links on pedagogy, <laughs> and I got to start doing it. <laughs> yeah, uh, so cool stuff. Yeah. Um, now, um, yeah. So solving for the 24 people showing up. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to as we build up the apprenticeship. Just to reiterate, yeah, we're gonna have to find an interim solution, like which is okay, good instructionals and people selected, cherry picked people that have just enough skill to uh, do this twenty four swarm build. Okay, yeah, like we talked about. Yeah, is it uh, worth so talking that. through some of the characteristics, uh, or do you do you have at the top of your mind? characteristics you would look for or select for uh characteristics uh before we go there the only other thing that's kind of like let's stay at overview for a sec okay 
Yeah. But the other overview thing was that grant thing, like George Mason University. Right. That would be, that was actually pretty compelling. Like the kind of language I was getting from that is that that would be a fit. Yeah. Uh, at least the way they wrote it. So, so maybe it is. And if so, we should pursue it. And the other thing is like Ken here, he, like we're gonna we're filling out the J the the H four visa, which is this other form, so that he wants he wants to come over for two years. Okay. Once again, like in a, a training training apprenticeship, it's H four visa. So that's that. That maybe maybe around the time we're building, probably a little late. No, that this stuff is gonna take probably longer, probably several months. But um, yeah, that's kind of on my plate so what details do we want to delve into uh today well, yeah let's look at the glide path uh let's just orient ourselves real quick um <clears throat> so as and near the, as i can yeah. what's up yeah and the juicy tidbit you showed with uh eric early to publish something yeah uh, what you showed me your your 50 dollars per hour thingy <laughs> yeah before i do that let me uh i'm gonna add a shape i'll add a diamond and that will that will indicate where we currently are we'll make this a... okay so this is where yeah we are. okay mm, wow okay now as, as far as fundraising goes, so, you know, the uh, Emerging Ventures grant application, um, <clears throat> what can I do to help with that? I mean, I, how, how do you, like, let's assume for a second that that's a good, good place to spend some time um, between the three of us working on it. W what... Uh, I don't know, give me give me a sense of like of of how comfortable you are tackling it, what I can do to help. Um. Well, the, yeah, I mean, it's probably something that uh, summary of the proposal and stuff like that. I kind of look, looked at this and it's like, yeah, that's the first thing is just a very simple thing, right? Uh, pretty. How, how many words do, do we have? Like it was like not too too extensive right no the um, the application is actually pretty straightforward i mean what what it's looking and i'll pull it up right now actually yeah i'm looking at it yeah i actually applied for uh before it for outlaws incorporated but i think this i think osc is a much better fit um, it doesn't look like there's a word limit for the actual summary of the proposal. Um, so well, it's here it says the proposal should consist of a proposal no longer than 1,500 words. Okay. Oh, I see it. Okay, I got it. Plus supplementary yeah. materials. Well, shit. I mean, the supplementary materials could be the TED Talk. It could be... A lot of stuff in yeah. the wiki it could be. Uh, I mean, I that that may be a task in and of itself is identifying supplementary. Identifying supplementary. what? I mean, that's that's the real deal on that. So, what is it? Is it are we? I mean, the moonshot is transitioning the economy from proprietary to collaborative. Um, now. Uh, reinventing manufacturing for for distributed production through open source micro factories that collaborate on develop product development <clears throat> it could be cd home we're solving for housing uh probably in fact i mean the most i think without getting off track i think the cd home would be the advantage of that is that's our specific way of implementing the the larger pictures yeah so it would have to i think it would have to be the, like cd home um shorter than that it would have to be something like a smaller 
distributive enterprise like 3D printer or CNC machines where we actually, we just started cutting steel. Like we got some initial cuts and stuff. We just did the torch table. Um, yeah, like that could be one. But I mean, the one that we're giving most energy to is the house. So it probably make most sense to do house for the, the moonshot. Now, we'd have to weave in the larger narrative very clearly into this, but it's the most clear example we have of, of this going forward, right? Right. <clears throat> yeah, my instinct is that we need to develop a logic chain that starts with sale of a CD go home to yeah. uh, campus that turns out <clears throat> or like that brings apprentices and students to creating a collaborative economy or, or now is guess, that... whatever the, whatever the grand vision is uh, just creating a logic chain from now until then, because we've already kind of done that with the glide path. And then we just need to turn it into a story or, or, or a narrative arc. I think. Mm hmm. June one, build KC two through five. Whoa, cool, man. Um, February one. Let's see, where is the where's the build one in Kansas City? Right here, starting February. Um, well, I think I think we had that window starting in February because your the product yes. development would be wrapping up and you'd be able to focus on client acquisition or site acquisition or you know doing all the administrative uh, support activities you need to build a house in Kansas City. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you saying like as opposed to later or as opposed to earlier? Oh, not opposed to anything. I'm just I'm just. Uh, like remembering why the spec build KC one block overlaps into February one, because like <clears throat> you're not going to break ground February one most likely. Right, right. Because of the right. prior. So we have um from February one to May thirty first. That's pretty realistic. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in there, there's the, but if the there's this. Uh, emergent ventures application is that what's the deadline on that is that rolling basis or what's what's the thing what's the timing on that i'm pretty sure it's rolling um if it's rolling then we probably february one is we when we submit um I, i'm i'm thinking like with pictures of our beautiful build Here's what we're doing. We're scaling this model according to innovative distributive enterprise that we've been working on. And, and, and what's the, like from their perspective, how do they, um, they'd have to buy the whole package. Like that's, we have to explain it well. They'd have to, for us to get this, they would have to spend enough time to study the possibility kind of like Steve did. Um, I mean, yes, yes and no. Um, the it, it's run or is started by Tyler Cowan and one of his fellow professors, Tyler Cowan's an economist. Uh, uh, I think he's kind of a bit of a polymath, but um, I, I'm not sure that there's anything you have to produce between now and when you submit the application. Like my, my gut tells me that uh, you've done, you've proved enough like skin in the game and concepts of what OSE can accomplish uh, and most of it's documented on the wiki anyways, that really the challenge is gonna be formulating the story for the actual application. Um, and like, to me, to me, that's more like I, between now and February 1st, I'm not, I'm not sure they're producing or finishing the, the rosebud is going to make that much of a difference because you've already built two others and you live in one. 
Um, yeah. So from the outside, it doesn't look different. No, I, I think I, I'm not. I'm not advocating rushing into the application, but I. Uh, and maybe we do wait until Rosewood's done. I just, I think the story is the thing that's most important. Yeah, I'm just looking at Tyler Cowan, the link I put in there. Looks like a good guy. He doesn't look like a, like a economics professor. <laughs> So that's a good thing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I meant to ask you, it, there's a podcast. Uh, have you ever heard of Tim Ferriss? Of course. Okay. So his podcast, he had on uh, Balaji, I forgot his last name. Uh, yeah, I heard about that. that oh, one. you did? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I did. So, so one and thing I'm... One thing I'm going to do is um, like audio excerpt. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Oh, that's that's marketing thinking. And also contacting the fellow who who is speaking on our behalf, because then he must have some fondness of this program already. So I, have not, I haven't heard about him, but definitely would be, I was thinking of following up in my ample spare time. It's a prime thing to do. Yeah, the podcast is like four hours long. <laughs> uh, You've heard about him or? Balaji? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I've, you know? I've, I mean, I've heard him speak on podcasts only. Um, he's... He's, he talks a lot about um, the world, just essentially the world, like like sovereign borders dissolving and everything becoming a DAO. Um, Is that consistent with with armies disappearing or not disappearing? Like the discussion we had, armies are serve some purpose right now for world peace. Oh, I I actually don't know. I <clears throat> I don't. I'm not I'm not super smart on uh, his position or like his entire theory about everything. It's really I've only heard excerpts um, and like a, I've only heard him speak on one other podcast. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know. I, I just thought it was cool that it was it was a completely uh, random. I mean, he's a very prominent individual right now. A lot of people are listening to him, and he mentioned the Global Village construction set. And he mentioned it in the context of like, what happens if um, uh, you like? Are you talking about Ferris or Balaji? Balaji. Both. Balaji. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was, he was just saying like, well, uh, the premise was like, well, what happens if you lose, uh, like the existing mass production and commercialization of all the products people need to live a first world life. And he said, well, there's this thing called open source ecology and the global village construction set that, that is a blueprint for starting civilization. So that was, that was a really cool soundbite, I think. Yeah. Should do that on our test to put it on a testimonials page. Uh -huh. It is a testimonial. Um, we have to explain so is professor cowan actually a reviewer is he involved in emergent ventures do you know anything more about it uh, i'll do some more research I, let's I get know. some research because that would uh, pretty much determine how we pitch it i would i would want to tell the truth that means the really technically speaking, what distributed market substitution really means and what the collaborative economy really means. That's a very technical topic. It's not for the faint hearted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not for the faint hearted. It's it's I think gets into the next economic theory that's that's gonna arise. Uh, so if I can speak it like like it is, 
that would be nice. That's the only way that I could see if, if that we ever would have a chance of actually getting it because otherwise people miss the message. No, I think that's right. <clears throat> Definitely. We want to show up as authentically and, and uh, I mean, if there's any grant application out there that is going to reward ambition, like a, a very visionary plan, it's this one. Yeah. And that also made me think of, I mean, what, man, that's never heard of it. Um, haven't heard of many things, but what other ones are there out there too? Right. Right. <clears throat> Cause you just threw this one out of the blue. There must be others. Right. Um, okay. So putting this into practice, I've got a couple tasks that I need to work on before next week. Um, specifically get more info on the emergent ventures application to make that a, a, a focus. So essentially like assemble the, the tools and, and start organizing the information so that we can begin telling the OSC story or the, or the proposal. Mm -hmm. Um, I will also do the marketing, uh, little soundbite for my Instagram and, and, and share it to you. Um, Let's see. So by the time we meet next, you'll be just wrapping up the seminar, the teacher seminar. Um, oh, interestingly, no, because that's Wednesday. Wednesday it starts. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <clears throat> okay. So I'm already going to be rednecking out there Monday, Tuesday. Okay. Beautifully. Cool. Great. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, we had, yeah, we had also talked about should, you know, is there any interest or does it make sense to, to start the, just looking chronologically through the glide, the glide path, you've got the product development, completing the, the rosebud and then fundraising is really the next, um, chronologically thing that we have on there. Is there any like any discussion with Steve this early or, or do we wait? Oh yeah. No, sure. Sure. We can, I, I bring him up to speed on everything. I'm up to. So, um, definitely. I mean, the, the main, what is the proper terminology regarding the apprenticeship? We are, what is it? Provisional approval? Like, what is it regarding? Yeah. Oh, no, I think that's certified. Fair. I think yeah, that's fair. Um, they've <clears throat> they've provisionally approved our standards, the work process, and we're we have the green light to start bringing apprentices as soon as we can meet those standards. Okay, so our standards for the apprenticeship have have been approved. They've been defined and approved. Yes, specifically, we, we need to be able to pay the apprentice. We need to be able to support them living on the campus. Uh, we need to be like a safe, habitable place for them. Um, we um, and we need to start with a one-to-one -one ratio, but the one-to-one -one ratio thing is like flexible. So if we were to have infrastructure improvements to support 24 people and the budget to pay for additional instructors on specific tasks then I imagine that one-to-one -one ratio thing would go away. But but like in principle, the, the main things we have to solve for before being live with the apprenticeship are infrastructure, wage, and um, I guess getting applicants. And that's for the yeah. that's for the two-year production technologist. And they still haven't gotten back to me with the tiny house curriculum yet. Yeah, but that would be the uh, that would that could occur um, in parallel with everything else that we're doing. Uh, yeah, right. And are we still our main? Yeah, I mean the idea that fits the i with the, in terms of the educational plan, in terms of here's the modular infrastructure for rapid learning, like the education facility, which would be outside of the workshop, the, the production facility, the micro factory. The goal of the micro factory for building CD homes is highly replicable, off-grid, 
So push an envelope, at least on several grounds. The education facility would be a separate thing. But think about the, if we do the crash course on here, you build your, your cabin. Yeah, like everything like that. How do we get to the level of um, everything, how we structure it is actually building the campus. That's, that's a total hit. And we kind of got away from that. We want to do that. We have done that. I think we gained some clarity that, okay, we're running a crash course. Well, that is our infrastructure development. Um, well, no kidding, but just being clear about structuring what we do in that kind of manner and maybe, because I think that could give, give us some other opportunities of how we approach, like the, for example, education, well, whatever we do right? Training people. The, the thing that we, like when I was thinking about, okay, how do, how do we train people, educate people, um, getting that to a science, to the science of, it's literally the science of collaborative literacy. It's like, man, the potential is that you can have, you still can do, have the kind of people that we have right now, uh, interested individuals, but how do you structure their experience that it completely builds upon the last? And we, we are far from that. I mean, we do some, I mean, there's Wiki and there's Docs and CAD and there's sometimes, sometimes there's tremendous contribution from people because that exists because we have resources online. Like for example, um, did you know that the, the Global Village construction set in two minutes that's an early high quality video that we produce, but somebody completely unknown to us went online, scoured all our video assets and produced this most amazing video. Okay. That was like production quality. Um, like that kind of stuff does happen, but uh, for society to go forward, I believe it's imperative that, and this is talking big here, that we need to learn as a society to completely build upon what has happened before and we need to show that in a spectacular way here and structurally we can implement that by having these modular learning pods like say the 16 by 16 bays in some structure which are set up all for learning and also for the continued documentation so as you're going through it you're actually being indoctrinated in time binding and going further, economic time binding, those are some jargon terms, but technical terms for what it means to actually build upon former, former work in a very effective way. Like that problem has not been cracked in any way in society, I don't think. It's just to give you an example, like I like to use this example where there's like thousands upon thousands of CNC machines, like CNC routers that have been made and not a single one that's commercial quality like mm -hmm. through the open source hobbyist movement. It's like, that is the problem we're solving. Imagine in those tens, possibly even like hundreds of thousands of builds actually collaborated to make one that actually works and is actually superior to anything out there in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, there's potential <clears throat> and there's blocks to that, but, but yeah, that's the kind of problem we're trying to solve. I'm, I'm getting uh, sidetracked a little bit, but it's essential to how we set up structure that like when we think about how we struc structure this campus, make that possible structurally. And I, I appreciate completely after this year and your visit, how, man, we have to be extremely deliberate about that infrastructure for making that happen. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, <clears throat> to me, the first step, though, is is like breaking ground it, you know it, it's the actual first cabin or it's the actual junkyard being completed or it's the actual site cleanup like <clears throat> i i'm not i'm not sure that we have a solid plan yet um <clears throat> for how we're going to accomplish those things and to me the limiting factor right now is your time and attention and money so, so I hate I hate to feel like I'm um, too narrowly focused here, but I, I'm I'm really damn it! I was trying to drop all this funky theory, and we got to get back into the trenches. But you're absolutely right. Let's do it. 
Um, yes, it, but but going, you know, the, it, if I remember correctly, when we left it <clears throat> last week, we were the the the, two, the like one to two week crash courses for tiny houses was one way to build the infrastructure on the campus. Um, but that could be replaced if you have the funding to just build it or to just bring people in. Um, do, do you see what I'm saying? Like, like the initial assumption was there's a certain level of bootstrapping yeah. here and we're doing crash courses and, and coming up with a tiny house design that we can then start building out the campus. <clears throat> but, you know, we're not wedded to that. Is that still a safe assumption? It is, but think about the how many different birds we were killing with that one stone there. Because um, even if we do get funding, why wouldn't we? Like, say it's now the apprentices building their their structures. Right. <clears throat> totally. Right. So totally. There's a lot of overlap there. Yeah, and that that's why it was so appealing. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, say we get funding to do more. I mean, we can go out and say, okay, here's now our proposal. We're just going to get like a million or two uh, just to do some of these things. That's a potential way to go about it or think about it. Um, and maybe we pursue it. But right now, the I don't know how to think about it. It's... it's uh, I feel like we really have our hands busy on the ground where then um, the revenue model of the CD column just speaks for itself. We don't really have to worry about it. That's, uh, or maybe we integrate those two things and say, okay, so we're on the ground, we're so busy. And at a certain point, we just say, oh, okay, we got enough data, we got the numbers, let's bring in the money or something like that. We could go about something like that. But I guess until that point, where we have enough, uh, where we're down the the CD go home completion, we're close enough to the finish line there, which is around February two. Um, we can pull a trigger, but I think it's going to be emergent. This is emergent behavior, right? We'll see how it goes. And all we know is that right now we need uh, all focuses on the on the product, right? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and so, then uh, yeah, I'm I'm updating the my log, and right now I've yeah. got the uh, priorities are the Emergent Ventures application, completing the Summer X and your 3D workshop or 3D printer workshop, product development, and client acquisition. Yeah, I mean I think that marries this- with what you just said about some of these infrastructure and funding questions are emergent. Yeah, I mean, right now we, we've got enough resources to continue going full force until we burn down completely, <clears throat> which is... Well, I mean, your, your, burned down. your product yeah. development is low cost, right? You have most of the material you need, right? And it's a lot oh, of good work on a computer. Uh, yes, if you consider that CD home too, but if you consider that the actual build in the wild, we have to put up all the money for that up front. Yeah, no, no, no. I was just talking about the, the product development side, the developing the documentation. No, that that's low cost. Mm-hmm. It's only the cost of rice and beans and a cup of chai. <laughs> <laughs> but it happens every day. Right. That's every day, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like we're in a good place, right? We, um, the plan's realistic. We have a, we have a timeline and a list of priorities. Like that to me is success. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the house microfactory thing, yeah, we got to demonstrate that technique of building because that's pretty big, actually talking to Ken. Ken wants to go two stories in Indonesia when he builds. And I was thinking about that. Huh, interesting, because uh, 
the kind of structure we're building, it lends itself to multiple stories in a, actually in a modular way too. So it's actually quite exciting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how, how would the, the micro factory, is it the same thing as the 3000 square foot workshop that we were talking about? Is that, a, is this a different structure that you're, no, that's that's the thing that that yeah. that structure is the micro factory for building yeah. houses, which we right. have to think in our mind. Okay, this is a thing we're going to transplant. Like, say we set up an operation in Kansas City, or we're doing our distributive enterprise work. We partner with somebody. That's that's what we deploy. It's the ability to build houses. Here's the ability to produce them right. at a rate of a couple a week. Okay. Um. So I, I have three subscribers now. That reminds me. Um, I'm going to send you I'm, let me put this in the chat. To your new podcast? I do have a new podcast, but that, that uh, wasn't what I was going to mention. Okay. So I just sent you the link, but if you follow around along. So if you go on the website at the top, we see where it says click here to sign up. Oh yeah. So do me a favor and uh, sign up for this um, because I just sent out a newsletter update to the three people who are signed up right now who are interested. Oh man, I wanna hear about it. Yeah. Signed up. I can probably send you a copy. So, so this is what I what I just sent out. I'll throw this in my log too. Man, look at that! That's some strong brands up there. Where did I get me a logo like that for, for the OSC site? All right. I wonder if you can see if you can view it there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. I'll put this in my log. Oh, you should th throw in some like share on the social media links. Can you do that? Like, I'll I throw it on straight onto face Facebook where I typically frequent. So, so this uh, this 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 is just the letter I sent out to people who have actually actively subscribed. Mm-hmm. So they, they have to like put their, they have to subscribe to this newsletter to, to receive it. Yep. Okay. In in the wiki, how do I like do the equivalent of just return or, or start a new line without a bullet. 
I don't know. You gotta have a bullet. Well, you can do like a uh, four lines. Like you can do like uh, four dashes. Okay. And it'll get you like a break line. Four minus signs. Yeah. Get you a break. That's one way. Um. Yeah, like it's bullets, and then it's just paragraphs, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, look okay. at you, madly in love with this wiki now. <laughs> love that. <laughs> um. So, what else do we want to cover in terms? Of, do we want to? Okay, so say on a glide path. Um, No, I mean, I, I, I everything else is waiting on <clears throat> responses. So your mentor, I told you I'd work on. I'm waiting on a response. I'm waiting on a response about the tiny house apprenticeship, um, and everything else is kind of the ball is mostly in your court right now because it's product development. It's wrapping up summer X. <clears throat> um, it's um, I guess updating Steve and seeing what he says. Um, I think, I think, in like mid December, early January, we should be talking about client acquisition and see what what way the wind's blowing there, uh, so that we can hit the ground running February first. Okay. Well, maybe in the meantime, so show me again what you teased me with at the beginning. Yeah. And we go back to that. What program is that? Canva. That you're using there. Okay. Canva. You know, it, another way to do this is like instead of just saying that, say. Oh yeah. So the other thing. Um, finding out a specific uh, detailed schedule for, for the Kansas City area. What is the specific inspection schedule? Yeah. You want to tackle that? Sure. Because that, that we, you, you have your flyer two weeks. Okay, but what's the reality? We got to get reify that. Um, because that might even like man we could even possibly make a decision think about this tactically speaking decision to locate the house where the schedule is actually more favorable because we're talking about keeping people around and <clears throat> people waiting if we're building one house at a time right Mm -hmm. so knowing that so there's kansas city okay so we we find that out and next we say okay so this is the budget for bringing in 24 people yeah <clears throat> so the main thing there is all the assets for the documentation assets i mean with that said, like Ken's here, he might help out on uh, some of the house build stuff, finishing, possibly documentation. But how do we um, maybe leverage resources we have to generate some of this documentation? That's that's the magic question. So it's people, if they have design skill, according to freaky modular design ways. I mean, they can be. Um, not just any person, uh, but is there any hope to, to find people uh, to actually do documents, have a session or two uh, doing documentation, technical writers, I mean, hiring technical writers to get this stuff out there, um, graphics people. I mean, th those are all kinds of roles that are needed. So to do a nice set of documentation, that's technical writing, graphics, visual communication 
um i mean it's a whole team it's it's like it's the perennial question how do you yeah i mean without that's the problem we're trying to solve we're just saying how do you get people to collaborate it's not that's the not the easy thing but the promo so so the best hope of that is could be things like okay here's a promo video of the truth of what we're trying to actually do here help out get inspired um contribute to it for example someone who saw the ferris show uh is into power electronics and i asked about the open source inverter for the cd co home yeah maybe we'll get on that kind of thing uh -huh. You know, people that come from the woodwork um, who have common interest in this. And you'd think we could find some of them, but but until the ways of distributive enterprise and all this stuff is super crystal clear to people as far as what it means and what the what the incentive and reward is, not an easy sell. But we could do we could think about the video. Uh, but but put up your um, show that flyer again, man. Um, what, what's the answer to the question? Um, two weeks depends on the inspection schedule. That's a fact. Um, 50 per hour that we can possibly say that, um, I want to be at February one when I have counted the entire budget and the entire time budget. Cause we've got tons of footage and data that we basically have to sum up and, and count up. It's accounting, accounting time. So now at that time we've graded the finish and put on the siding and finished the interior. We haven't finished the interior and stuff like that, a kitchen, bathroom, all that. Right. Um, that will reify that. Kansas City, well, maybe maybe we decide that it's independence or or somewhere else where actually the construction the the inspection schedule is actually more favorable, such as like you know you could get inspectors on a site within the same day or there's a lesser number of inspections not an excessive amount of inspections that it's maybe like maybe some place has seven inspections whereas another place has five right well it's all days that may count so what i may do is um, we'll take out the wage input. I'll make it even more general for this. Um, what's coming up, you're talking about like assembling the team to help with the documentation and, and generating that interest through like some sort of promotional video or material. <clears throat> um, you know, I've already quoted you what the production team I worked with would cost to come out um, to do that. I think that's probably a little bit not a great use of money because they're probably best used if you have people on like for the actual build. Um, in terms of like generating the interest and forming the team for documentation and, and the visual representation, um, I think we need to be a little bit further in product development to, and, and frankly, quite client acquisition. Uh, Maybe not February 1st, but I think we need to make a little bit more progress there before trying to form the team. Because you need to mm -hmm. be able to coordinate or like you need to be like a conductor with the with that team that, that you form. Well, the documentation, the only thing is like the documentation, build documentation. Uh, architects can potentially help. That's like a clear avenue. But but as far as the ones that can help or do so like without pay, that's like no, probably ain't gonna happen. It's 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 like it's building a a business case on on just complete risk. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean. I can go back to Yale and see if it, if the School of Architecture, if any students want to take this up as a class project. Right. I don't know if the timing will work out, but yeah, I don't I don't know what happened with Jack. Um, 
I sent him the example flyer and I never heard back from him. So I don't know if that means he forgot about it or nobody was interested. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. I need to, I need to check up on that. Yeah. Uh, so what else? Yeah, just keep going. Keep going at uh, you're logging pretty well. That's good. So it's pretty transparent. Um, yeah, I guess just to recap, uh, still emergent ventures. <clears throat> like the only thing that's changed the priority since we began stock talking is I need to start researching the what it takes to build a house in the city timeline uh, what inspections what stage they need to be in um, gathering information to see if we can focus client acquisition someplace that makes the most sense what about client acquisition that's that's not now what do you mean? That's middle, middle December. That's that's like you have to worry about that at this point right now, right? Or or no, what no, is I, your yeah? yeah I I just meant no. I just meant um, uh, doing the analysis to see where it makes the most sense to build, which can then focus yeah. what clients we look for, or could even be eligible. <clears throat> because the the speed of getting this house up and selling it is actually a part of the. It's a part of the proof of concept. Yeah. Yeah, um, it is. Cool. All right. Well, I think I've got a good, I've got more, more stuff on my plate that I'll have complete for sure by next week. But I think if, if our weekly meetings go like this, where we sort of like reevaluate the priorities and can focus our efforts, I think that's a good, good way to move forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, cool. All right. Well, uh, it's always good seeing you. Good to talk again. Um, yeah. And then as we develop the education, yeah. Hope to have you out here mm -hmm. um, regarding some, yeah, some of the onboarding and psychology work. Yeah. So everybody's ready. All right. I'm feeling good, man. Um, have a great Thanksgiving. I'm, I'm guessing you guys aren't going anywhere. Yeah, we're, we're sticking around. Cool. Yep. Yep. So happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanks for checking in. We'll be, uh, we'll be in touch. So yeah, send me send me this video so I can publish. Okay. Give my love to Katerina. Thanks, man. Take care. Take care.